Good morning everyone. Today we're going to take a look at container apps and we're going to deploy container apps and front door together. So this is one of the ways of deploying container services or containerized applications into Azure alongside things like Kubernetes and container instances. Container apps has some great advantages including additional scaling ability and the ability to scale to zero. So if you have an application running inside a container you can have that application monitored once load increases that load can actually spit up multiple instances of that container and then as the load decreases and if the load decreases to completely zero the containers themselves can be offboarded and can actually um, scale down to nothing so you're not actually charged until the next person comes in then that next person that comes in the containers will start spinning up again for the application this is a great really flexible solution that allows us to have the scaling ability of something like kubernetes but without actually having the complexity of deploying something like kubernetes into our environment so let's get straight into having a look at a bit of a diagram uh, about what we're going to do here so looking over here on the whiteboard uh, what we're actually going to have is we're going to have an existing container that we want to deploy. Now, if you have a container uh, in your environment, the containers container themselves are normally stored inside something called a container registry. Now, if you're used to Docker, that will be something like hub.docker.com. Now, this is going to be a public repository or public location to store a lot of container services you'll find things like wordpress and ubuntu and nginx and all the other fancy containers that people use on a daily basis on hub.docker.com if you're unsure about how to actually use uh, docker and you're un unsure about how to use containers uh, i have actually made a video on this previously so have a scroll back through some of my videos and you'll find one based on docker and containers now we're going to take uh, an existing image that already exists, just an NGINX server. Now, NGINX is a very small, tiny, cut down HTTP web server. Uh, it can be used for reverse proxies, it can be used for hosting websites. It's just a tiny container application that we're going to use. Now, our container app service over here, container apps service over here we're going to go and create this inside our azure environment so we'll put that inside a little azure bubble over here okay and i'm going to deploy these container apps onto a specific region so that might be something like uk south that might be something like us east um, it might be anywhere else in the world that I actually want to deploy this to. So these container apps, what they're going to do is we're going to pull in this container from something like hub.docker.com and we're going to deploy a container underneath here. We can actually go and scale this if we actually want to and we could communicate directly to it from the outside world if we wanted to. But we don't want to actually do that. One of the other things we're actually going to do here is we're going to layer on another technology on top of these container apps and we're going to layer on something called Azure Front Door. Now what Azure Front Door allows us to do is essentially have an endpoint that can connect to other services underneath. The Azure Front Door can go and exist in multiple locations. So for example, if I had a situation where, let's just drag this down a little bit further, um, if I had a situation like this, I had US East over in one side of the world and I had UK South over the other side of the world. And maybe, for example, I deploy my container apps application over here into UK South. Now, there's a big bit of ocean between US East and, U US East and UK South. So if I've got users over here in the US, okay, that want to go access resources over here in UK South, uh, that might actually take quite a while for them to do. Uh, whereas if I've got users over here in UK South accessing the container apps, they're going to be accessing it perfectly fine. Now, if I layer on this other service in front of here called Azure Front Door, now Azure Front Door, Front Door, can exist over here in US East and can also exist over here in UK South. Now what Azure Front Door does is it links to underlying services like this and it acts as essentially both uh, small firewalls but mostly a CDN solution or a content delivery network solution, i.e. this thing does stuff like caching. 
okay? So what happens is the US East guys will actually end up hitting the Azure front door, which will redirect the container apps underneath. This will end up reading this HTTP information and things like um, images, things like JavaScript, things like HTML, um, and things like videos, these are going to be cached at the Azure front door location. So it means that the next time somebody goes and accesses that service or looks for those container apps, they can actually retrieve the cached information from their local uh, front door location. So we're going to layer on front door in front of our container apps application and our container apps application is just going to run a very basic and oops, let's spell that right. Engine X server inside here. Okay. So let's get straight into a demo for this. So I'm here in my Azure portal and I'm going to search for container apps down here. And there's a few options. I've got things like container apps, container instances, container app profiles. It's a huge, huge, huge subject. We're just going to concentrate on container apps for the moment. So here we're going to create a brand new container apps environment for it to actually work with here. So let's hit the create button, wait for this to load. And we're going to call this container app name uh, Mike YouTube Demo. Okay, perfectly fine. Uh, we can deploy this into a new resource group and we can create a new resource group and call this YouTube Demo if we want to. And we'll just make sure to deploy this to a different region. Now I'm in the UK and you've got to be careful of this regional section down here because Microsoft sometimes uh, what they do is, for example, here they organize the regions alphabetically and I'm in the UK and Australia is quite far away. So let's go and filter these items down and let's go and deploy this to uh, UK South. So we'll deploy this to, to the London data center location. That's fine. And we'll create an, a container apps environment for this and it will just be a managed environment for my YouTube demo because I don't have an existing environment here at the moment. That's going to spec on how fast this is actually going to run. Uh, so what I could do is I could use an existing quick start image, which just has the simple hello world container down here. If I untick this option, uh, I have the option to use multiple different image source locations. I could use one of my own Azure container registries. If I'm storing my own Azure, uh, my own containers that I've developed inside Azure, or I can use something like the Docker hub. So if I go to the Docker hub here, let's go to hub.docker.com and have a look at some of the available images uh, that are out there on the internet. Uh, the one I wanted to go and grab inside Docker Hub was Nginx. Now, Docker are always kind of changing this website and the search is a little better than it used to be. But this is the one that I want here, the official build of Nginx, just a very basic one. There's nothing that nothing this is doing. It's just going to run the Nginx server. It's actually normally used as a base to build other containers off. There's many, many different tags and many, many different versions of this down here. But actually, all that I really need is I just need this to be called Nginx. That's all. This is the unique tag that I've got. I could make it a little bit... Um, more interesting, so I could go engine x colon latest if I wanted to do this. And I don't need a registry logon server inside here because this is actually going to be a public image. This is just Docker IO. I don't need any command overrides for that at all. It should be able to pull that directly from the internet. So Azure Container Apps allows you to connect add-ons that support your app to run in the same environment as your container app. I don't have any additional microservices with this, so I'm not going to add any additional bindings into this. And my ingress for traffic is going to be that needed HTTP or TCP endpoint. We're going to enable ingress traffic, i.e. we're going to be able, enabling people to communicate to this container and we'll accept this traffic from anywhere at the moment, not just limited to the container apps environment itself. This means that we could actually uh, kind of isolate the uh, the uh, the networking ability. Sorry, we could isolate this limited to container apps environment means that we could isolate the traffic to only communicate to things from a VNet that we actually control inside our Azure environment. But I want to allow external people to actually talk to this. Uh, so we're going to ignore client certificate mode down here. The transport's going to be automatic and we're just going to leave that target port at port 80. Because that's going to be the default port for Nginx down here. Uh, we're not going to tag the resource and we're just going to review and create this container app. Give us a moment to do its thing and check what I was doing. And we'll go and create that. 
We'll give this a moment to do the deployment. It shouldn't take more than a couple of minutes to do the initial deployment. OK, my deployment is now complete. I can go to that resource, get rid of this deployment succeeded notification. And in the overview space, we can actually see I have an application URL. Let's go and connect to the application URL and see what we get. This has given us a default URL for us to work with. We could change this in the future if we wanted to. We could layer on different ways of actually routing to this container app. And we can see I've got welcome to Nginx. So this welcome to Nginx is being generated by a container that is running here, if I go into containers. And I should be able to see I've got 0 0.5 CPU cores and one gigs uh, worth of memory. So if I come down here into revisions and replicas, what I should be able to see is that I've actually got one replica. I've got one Nginx copy actually running at the moment. So if I go inside here, have a look at these revision details. There you go, active and total replicas one of one. We've got a min max replica of zero through to 10, which means that auto scanning is actually already on for me at the moment within this. If I go into scale down here, uh, you should see I've got a HTTP scalar rule already built for us. If I go into this HTTP scalar rule, you can see the maximum current requests are 10. If I go and edit and deploy this container rule, go grab the existing one down here, edit this container, what I could do is I could go and change the amount of resources that I can actually add to this. So I can add more CPU cores if I wanted and more memory if I wanted to this container instance or container instance, sorry, container application down here. If I wanted to go into the scale option over here, what I can do is I can do the min max replication. So if I change this around and say, for example, I want two, I could also go and add additional scaling rules down here if I wanted. So I could say, hey, the rule name is going to be HTTP and the type of the scaling rule might be something like HTTP scaling and say if I have more than, uh, ooh, I don't know, 100 concurrent requests, what that is going to do is that's actually going to start to scale this out, so go from two to three to four instances. So really, really quick and easy to do. If I just click back here into revisions and replicas, uh, wait for this to actually go out. And what this is going to do, we're going to have two replicas down here for this environment rather than just the original one replicas down here. And what we can do is refresh this. So now our original resource has been deleted. Uh, we've now got two replicas going up here. This is the latest revision of our environment. Uh, so we've got two copies of the Nginx server. We should be able to refresh this and we'll still see welcome to Nginx. And this kind of process here for deploying a container and actually have this thing auto scale is possible within Kubernetes, but it's a lot more expensive and a lot more complex to actually achieve. Now, what we can also do on top of this is layer on additional services. So we could layer on something like Azure Front Door because this is currently only running in UK South and maybe I want to cache it for other regions as well. So let's go and actually layer that thing on here too. So let's jump up in here and let's go and have a look for front door and CDM profiles. Whoops, let's paste that twice. Let's go and get that front door and CDM profiles here. Let's go and create this. And we're going to create this as Azure Front Door. And we're going to use a quick create on here as well to get started with a simple web application and one endpoint, one origin and one WAF policy at the moment. So let's create that Azure Front Door. And we'll create this in the same resource group, this YouTube demo resource group. And we'll actually call this YouTube Front Door. OK. Uh, we'll leave this on a standard content delivery optimized uh, tier. There are differences between standard and premium SKUs. Most notably, the premium will cost you more money as well as have additional security features layered on top of that. Let's just call this uh, YTFD for the endpoint name, YouTube front door. And the origin type here is not going to be blobs or storage or cloud service. We're going to go scroll down here and we're going to select container apps. So very quickly, we can go and hook this into container apps and we can go and select our container apps down here. And the WAF is actually web application firewall. Uh, we can enable caching initially, sorry, and the query string caching behavior down here. 
uh, we will go in here and use a query string and we can actually even enable compression from this point too to make sure that it's fully optimized for users accessing this now admittedly that's not going to make any difference for people seeing a website that says welcome to nginx but if you imagine that this website has got lots of images lots of videos that caching and that compression might actually help quite a lot uh, with performance for people from different regions if you're not deploying your application to multiple regions so we're not going to bother with a web application firewall policy here. Uh, we're not going to filter any of this traffic. We're just going to go through and create this Azure front door directly here and wait for this to actually deploy. Okay, so our deployment of our front door is complete. We can go to that resource and we can see on this Azure front door that we should have an endpoint host name down here. Again, a default host name. We could adjust this if we wanted to. There's a domain section down here. So we could add in our own custom domains for our front door. So don't worry, you're not stuck with this endpoint host name. Copy that host name. Paste that into the browser down here. As you go and access it, we get page not found. We're able to find your Azure front door service configuration. If it's a new configuration, you might not, it might not be ready yet. Now, the Azure Front Door is a global service. This is a pretty common thing that you're going to see. Um, so it's gonna take a long time to actually kind of replicate this around the planet. Uh, this might take a few minutes, it might take a few hours, but rest assured at the moment, this is actually complete on its setup. So if we go back into the YouTube Front Door and we have a look at the origin groups down here, we can actually see if I configure the origin group, uh, you'll be able to check out that there is the original origin host name, the one from our Azure Container Apps.io down here. So after this is replicated around the planet, and after Front Door has been replicated to the other Azure regions, what we should be able to have is a cached globally available service for connecting to our single NGX instance here that's actually sitting on our Azure Container Apps. So I hope you enjoyed this small demo for how to deploy Azure Container Apps and how to deploy Azure Front Door in front of a, a scaled Azure Container Apps service. And I hope you'll join me next time for some more information and some more details on Azure. And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.